I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. Their lives shaped the world, and their deaths saddened it. I fully realize that um, a person uh, who stands for what I stand for, an activist, gay activist, becomes the target or the potential target for somebody who is insecure, terrified, afraid, or very disturbed themselves. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 political figures who died too soon. For this list, we've chosen political figures who died abruptly at a young age. Number 10, Harvey Milk. The reason for all this merriment and gaiety, if you pardon the pun, is the man standing to my right, the first gay supervisor elected in San Francisco. His name is Harvey Milk. One of the first openly gay people to win political office in America, it was Milk's spirit of inclusion that won him the allegiance of not only the LGBT community, but also the world. And why am I homosexual if I'm affected by role models? I should have been a heterosexual. And no offense meant, but if teachers are going to affect you as role models, there'd be a lot of nuns running around the streets today. Living his life in the closet until he was approaching middle age, his position in politics may have been relatively minor in comparison to others on this list, but his life galvanized a movement that's still strong today. And all the bigots out there, no matter how hard you try, you can never erase those words from the Declaration of Independence. No matter how hard you try, you can never chip those words from the face of the Statue of Liberty. Gunned down in 1978 by political enemy Dan White, Milk was introduced to a new generation by the Sean Penn biopic and today remains a beloved figure. Thousands and thousands of people and that feeling of such loss, having lost someone who was so important and something, you know, Harvey stood for something more than just him. Number nine, Eva Perón. They knew her as the wife of their strongman president, Juan Perón. They knew that she was a power behind his dictatorship. An aspiring actress, Eva Duarte met Colonel Juan Perón, and the trajectory of her life was forever changed. A year after the two were married, her new husband was elected president of Argentina. <laughs> As the new first lady, she fought for the women of Argentina to gain the vote. She went so far as to found the country's first female political party that was taken seriously. Although she ran for the vice presidency, her unsuccessful fight against cancer forced her to withdraw. Though her untimely death ended her political aspirations, Eva Perón's posthumous fame grew when she became the subject of the smash musical Evita. I'm Argentina And always will be Number 8, Che Guevara Many people today may recognize him from those Rage Against the Machine t-shirts or that movie they didn't see, but Che's impact on Cuba cannot be measured. Disgusted by the hunger and disease he saw in South America, he came to see the United States as the enemy. Alongside Raul and Fidel Castro, he led a movement to overthrow Cuban dictator Fulgencio Batista through guerrilla tactics. Once their bid for power succeeded, he held many positions in the new government. Leaving Cuba in 1965 to aid other guerrilla movements out to quash imperialism, Che was captured and executed by CIA-backed Bolivian forces in 1967. La Number 7. Ahmad Shah Massoud Massoud's piercing eyes stare out from posters and billboards across Afghanistan's capital. His face is on buses and shop windows. Assassinated two days before the September 11th attacks, this fierce opponent of the Taliban and all enemies of Afghanistan's freedom 
fell victim to a targeted suicide bombing. Masood first came to world prominence as a leader in the fight against the Soviet occupation of his land. His legacy is one of unflinching loyalty to his country and its people. These countries, for which our sacrifice bore fruit, should have held themselves morally responsible for Afghanistan. They should not have abandoned the people of Afghanistan. They should have helped in bringing peace and rebuilding Afghanistan. But, with great regret, when they each achieved their own aims and the Soviet Union was torn apart, everyone went their own way. The leader of the Northern Alliance, he has been declared a national hero, and September 9th is celebrated as Masood Day. This is a monument to Ahmed Shah Masood, a monument not just to the man, but to the myth. A person who, in death, is bigger than he was even in life. Number six, Robert Kennedy. We have to make an effort in the United States. We have to make an effort to understand, to go beyond these rather difficult times. Though he died before attaining the presidency he sought, Robert Kennedy's life should not be underestimated. As a senator and the U.S. Attorney General under his brother, RFK earned the respect and love of America. I am announcing today my candidacy for the presidency of the United States. Kennedy was a strong proponent of the civil rights movement and a strong opponent of organized crime. He was poised to take a run at the presidency when he was gunned down at a campaign stop by Sirhan Sirhan. Delirium broke loose and they realized that he had been shot. And uh, the people just went nuts. Kennedy had played a crucial role as an advisor in brother JFK's presidency, and it's likely his time in the White House could have been every bit as revered. I do not run for the presidency merely to oppose any man, but to propose new policy. Number five, Martin Luther King Jr. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Arguably one of the most charismatic figures in the history of America, King's ability to lead people of all ages, creeds, and colors in the fight against bigotry changed the complexion of the world today. All we say to America is be true to what you said on paper. The non-violent stance he championed held him apart from peers like Malcolm X and lent him the moral high ground. Murdered before his work was complete by James Earl Ray, his fight was picked up by the millions of people he inspired. His words live in the hearts and minds of open-minded people who hear them to this day. Somewhere I read of the freedom of speech, yes. somewhere I read, yes. of the freedom of press, yes. somewhere I read, yes. that the greatness of America is the right to protest far right. Number four, Abraham Lincoln. Two years ago, I proclaimed these people emancipated, then, thenceforward and forever free. Arguably one of the most important presidents in United States history, Lincoln's leadership during a time of great turmoil in the country's history helped mold the nation. He took office the year the U.S. Civil War began and was assassinated by John Wilkes Booth the year it ended. It seems as if he was predestined to shepherd America through a bloody war, his own death a cruel reminder of the price of such a conflict. Doesn't it strike you as queer that I, who couldn't cut the head off a chicken, should be cast into the middle of a great war, with blood flowing all around me? But even though his life was cut short, abolishing slavery and maintaining the Union are amazing accomplishments. There might not have been a need for a civil rights movement in this country. There might not have been a need for Martin Luther King Jr. had Lincoln uh, not been assassinated. The country never learned what he could do as a president in peacetime. But if it compared to his achievements in war, the world truly lost out. To do all which may achieve and cherish a just and a lasting peace among ourselves and with all nations. Number three, Benazir Bhutto. I do believe Pakistan is under increasing threat of an extremist takeover and to save the country I believe we must restore democracy. The 11th Prime Minister of Pakistan, 
Benazir Bhutto was a woman who held no illusions. She knew the politically active life she led could very well lead to her demise, but she eagerly embraced her choice. My father had a vision of Pakistan as a democratic and progressive nation. My family is committed to his vision of Pakistan. We don't fear anything. Though her legacy may not be as pristine as some would like it to be, there is no question that she holds the respect of a multitude of people, including many of her rivals. She was never interested in the moment. She was interested in the light at the end of the tunnel and history itself. A key figure in the history of Pakistan and a symbol of female empowerment the world over, Bhutto was assassinated in 2007. And I felt that's what they want to do. They want to lock me up in prison, fragment the Pakistan People's Party, ensure that we cannot continue fighting. The Iron Lady of Pakistan, as she was known, will not soon be forgotten. <laughs> Number two, Alexander the Great. We are not here today as slaves. We are here today as Macedonian free men! This was a man of such gravity and charisma that he was able to unite forces behind him to accrue a vast territory, one which could not be retained for long after his death at a young age. Alexander's impact on the world was absolutely immense. Amassing an empire that stretched from Greece to Egypt, he is considered by many to be the greatest military commander in history. It has become difficult to differentiate the myths of his life from the facts, and to know whether he was simply a warmonger or a brilliant leader. But what we know for sure is that he was beloved by many, and his actions and vision defined his world. If one looks at um, any great military commander of any time, no one can match his record. Napoleon is quite pathetic beside him. To be invincible is something that every commander aspires to be. Before we reveal our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. The history of unpunished violence against our people clearly indicates that we must be prepared to defend ourselves or we will continue to be a defenseless people at the mercy of a ruthless and violent Racist mob. Well, it was shock and consternation, I believe, that all Canadians have learnt of the death of Mr. Pierre Laporte, who was so cowardly assassinated by a band of murderers. We have all evening long been covering an unfolding story that took a uh, very, very tragic turn with confirmation from Buckingham Palace tonight that the world has lost uh, Princess Diana at age 36. Yes, to a Canada where anything is possible, where we all stick together and no one is left behind. Number one, John F. Kennedy. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. President for less than three years, JFK held the reins of power in America during some of the most important years in its history. This government, as promised, has maintained the closest surveillance of the Soviet military buildup on the island of Cuba. His expert handling of the Cuban Missile Crisis staved off all-out nuclear war. He championed and promoted the space race, which has given humanity a far greater understanding of the universe. I take pride in the words, Ich bin ein Violino. An extraordinary speaker, his address in Berlin and his inaugural speech inspired audiences across the country and around the globe. From Dallas, Texas, the flash, apparently official, President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. The world was shocked when he was taken far too young by an assassin's bullet, and the controversy over his assassination continues to this day. This single bullet explanation is the foundation of the Warren Commission's claim of a lone assassin. And once you conclude the magic bullet could not create all seven of those wounds, you have to conclude that there was a fourth shot. 
and a second rifleman. And if there was a second rifleman, then by definition, there had to be a conspiracy. Do you agree with our list? Which political figure do you think died too soon? For more political top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.